Hello, this is Brian. Today is Sunday, June 6, 2021. I'm in the Angeles National Forest, the San Gabriel Mountains, and I want to present a Spotlight on Shrubs video. Today's episode focuses on Bitter Cherry, Prunus emarginata, a fairly common native shrub here in the San Gabriel Mountains, and also here in Southern California. It is indeed related to cherries, plums, apricots, peaches. It is a member of the genus Prunus. We are right now at 7,400 feet, almost 7,400 feet in the San Gabriel Mountains, Los Angeles County, California, Southern California, right near Angeles Crest Highway. And that's Inspiration Point Vista area. And this is Blue Ridge Truck Trail, 3 and 20, 3 and 26 or something like that. And you'll see a lot of this shrub along this area. This is one of our uh, locally common species of shrubs here. Especially on drier open sites and sometimes in canyon bottoms. And like other members of the genus Prunus, it is a member of the rose family, the Rosaceae. And with the genus Prunus, again, it has a lot of uh, cultivated fruit tree relatives. So Prunus and Marginata, what are the main characteristics of this plant? Well, first off, it's generally a small to medium, sometimes quite large shrub it may potentially become a small small tree but more often than not it is a thicket forming shrub often with many stems and pretty dense populations and if we're looking at the foliage here we're looking at some quite narrow leaves that are kind of folded up at the midrib so these are quite narrow they're minutely toothed at the edges very minutely toothed So you can see here, the foliage is quite narrow, and again, it folds up at the midrib, so it's kind of folded upwards a little bit. And they get these small, rounded clusters of white, creamish white flowers. Kind of, kind of small. The typical rose family, five-petaled. And then when they fruit, they'll have these rounded clusters of reddish to purplish colored fruit during the late summer and early fall months. So this is pretty pretty typical. You'll see them a lot along roadsides. This is where, one of the places where you'll be quite likely to find them. They seem to colonize disturbed areas and also open areas in uh, Montaigne Chaparral. So they are part of the Montaigne Chaparral community. And like most species of prunus that I'm aware of, not all, especially considering here in Southern California, it is a winter deciduous shrub. So the leaves will drop off of the plant in fall and it will remain leafless until mid-spring. And unlike a lot of uh, cherries and relatives, the flowers come on as the leaves are well in their developmental stage. There are a lot of species of prunus that will flower before they leaf out, and this is not one of them. So, let's go take a look at the bark and other forms of this plant. So the bark is very similar to other species of prunus. Especially on younger, younger, younger branches and stems, they start off kind of smooth, kind of grayish with maybe a little bit of a reddish little bit of a reddish color underneath and mixed in to the hues of the bark and with these little horizontal lines which are called lenticels in botanical terms. Here's a closer up, up, here's a up close view of some of the older bark and as the plant ages the bark might slightly furrow a little bit. So again, grayish bark with uh, hints of reddish color, 
and then more of a solid grayish sometimes with some slight furrowing maybe as the plant gets much older or the stem gets much older one plant it might be confused with is from us from a distance they look kind of similar this is a uh, got similarly colored flowers this is a uh, Ceanothus cardulatus which is the mountain whitethorn only it's not related the leaves are short and more oval and that is a member of the buckthorn family Rhamnaceae but here we're gonna go buy a really nice patch right here of Prunus and Marginata. Like I said, just you can find these quite often on the sides of roads, uh, openings in woodlands and forest, and in mid to high elevation chaparral. I've seen them. I believe they can go down to 4,000 feet in elevation. And they can go up to over 8,000 feet, as far as I know. But here's a really nice thicket of them. Very dense, very lush, very lavish. And wanted to do the spotlight now while the plant's in bloom. So late May and early June, especially at these elevations, like six, seven, eight thousand feet, is a great time to see them in bloom. These ones, these flowers seem to be a little bit bigger. So you get a little bit better of an appreciation for what they look like more up close. Let me go see what the scent is like, if there's a scent. Not really a heavy scent. Kind of... Maybe a little bit of a sweetness. Not much. Not really much of a scent. But... It's a quite attractive shrub when it flowers, and then again when it fruits later on. Um, I don't know, I've read that the Native Americans use the fruit, the dried fruit. I don't know if that's the case. I might have read something about that. But from what I understand is the fruits are not palatable. I personally would not want to try them because they are supposed to be very astringent, very bitter, probably <laughs> probably make you gag. And then of course the seed pit probably contains a cyanide chemical that you would not want to ingest. So the fruits are very small. They're very small and kind of round shaped. Uh, you won't really get to see them now. So we're not in season for it. But they look like l miniature cherries. They're little droops. Stone seeded droops like uh, other species in the genus Prunus. So let's just take, you know, take a little time just to appreciate the little late spring, early summer cheer that these plants provide in these beautiful mountain ranges that we have here in Southern California. I will upload, well not upload, but I will uh, post in the description the more comprehensive range of this plant. Uh, I've seen it here in Southern California. I've seen it in uh, the Southern Sierra Nevada. It's probably pretty widespread or at least scattered here in the Western U.S. I've seen it uh, near Ponderosa, along Highway 190 in the Sierra Nevada. Not that far from Quaking Aspen Campground. I've seen them in the San Bernardinos. I've seen them below 5,000 feet on Palomar Mountain in San Diego County. And again, beautiful plant. Now, we're going to go back into a little more detail about this plant. Again, we saw what the leaves look like. They have these uh, very narrow, very narrowly ovate leaves. A little bit broader, slightly above the middle of the leaf. And then they get these little tiny stipules, little tiny miniature stipules. You won't see them very well on the camera, but they're really small stipules at the base of the leaf. And then uh, we were talking about the branches and the stems, but let's we'll talk about the twigs. The twigs become more of a reddish color. See, the twigs become more of a reddish color, but still with a little bit of that grayish overtone. So, Prunus and Marginata, the beautiful bitter cherry. Now, 
There is a species of prunus with which it can be confused because there are quite a few similarities in the plants. Um, there's one called Prunus virginiana variety demissa. That's the western choke cherry. And I uh, want to recommend uh, that you check out my spotlight video on that plant that I did last August in the Big Pines area. I did a video spotlight on that one last August 12th. So check that one out. But uh, I used to have trouble telling these apart. And during the winter time and early spring, when the plants are completely leafless, sometimes it could still be hard to tell. So how do you tell the difference between Pr Prunus virginiana variety demissa and Prunus and marginata? Because they do both grow together sometimes in shrubby thickets. I've seen them grown together. A video I did on Palomar Mountain, you, you'll uh, see the evidence of that, where I... Uh, walk along uh, near the top of uh, Booker Hill in Palomar Mountain State Park and I'm next to both species of plants and it's during the fall when the plants are changing color and shedding their leaves so but Prunus and Marginata generally has a smaller and narrower leaf than Prunus virginiana variety demissa Prunus and Marginata again narrow usually smaller leaf and their flower, their flowers are in you know, like small clusters, rounded clusters. Whereas Western choke cherry, Prunus virginiana variety demissa, those flowers are in linear clusters, linear stalks, linear. These ones are more rounded clusters, and Western choke cherry has more raceme like in other words a, a linear linear stalk with the flowers on each side of it and that's usually how I can tell but I'm looking at the plants in winter when they're leafless you just look at the old spent flower old spent flower and fruit clusters the you'll be able to tell that on prunus emarginata you'll see the same you'll see the same shape of clusters of old dried spent fruits and for the western choke cherry prunus virginiana variety demissa you'll notice that the old spent fruits fruit cluster stalks are just these little linear twigs sticking out so that's how you'll be able to tell the difference between the two when the plants are leafless but when they're in leaf larger leaves prunus virginiana variety demissa Smaller, narrow leaves, Prunus marginata. Rounded clusters of flowers and fruits, Prunus marginata. Linear clusters of flowers and fruits, Prunus virginiana variety demissa. So, that will basically do it for my uh, spotlight on bitter cherry. Quite a beautiful plant to check out here. Beautiful late spring, early summer flowers. And late summer, early fall fruits that are quite attractive as well and the birds and wildlife really go after them so that will take me to the end of this video thanks for watching come out here to Blue Ridge Truck Trail you don't even need four-wheel drive to get a nice chunk of the way up here and you'll get to see some beautiful scenery and some bitter cherry along the way thanks for watching I'll see you on my next episode